हेलो स्टूडेंट वेलकम टू दिस थर्ड क्लास ऑफ हाई परफॉर्मेंस कंप्यूटिंग सिस्टम यूनिट नंबर वन प्रीवियसली वी हैव सीन व्हाट इज एच व्हाट इज सुपर स्केलर एग्जीक्यूशन व्हाट इज मेमरी सिस्टम परफॉर्मेंस लैटेंसी एंड बैंडविड व्हाट इज वी एल आई डब्ल्यू प्रोसेसर and other related things in today's lecture we will see the another very important topic of unit number 1 that is explicit parallelism that means the dichotomy of parallel computing platform so this is also called as explicit parallel platform and explicitly parallel program must specify concurrency and interaction between concurrent subtasks the former is sometimes also referred to as control structure and the latter is communication model this means that uh, implicit parallelism is related to the microprocessor architecture whatever the parallelism we are going to achieve with implicit parallelism is related to that microprocessor inside only inside architecture only that's why we learned the pipeline architecture latency and bandwidth related to the memory cache and related uh, topics now opposite to that implicit parallelism explicit parallelism specify the concurrency here it is written concurrency and interaction between concurrent tasks now whenever i said concurrency that means the uh, control structure that why the former is sometimes referred to as control structure and whenever i said interaction between concurrent subtask that that is nothing but the communication model so control structure of parallel program parallelism can be expressed at various levels of granularity from instruction level to process level between these extreme exist a range of models along with corresponding architectural supports now parallelism can be expressed at various levels of granularity there may be a instruction level parallelism or process level parallelism data level parallelism so various levels of parallelism are there and this extreme exist a range of models along with corresponding architectural supports <coughs> sorry so processing unit in parallel computer either operate under the centralized control of single control unit or work independently if there is a single control unit that dispatch the same instruction to various processor that work on different data the model is referred to as single instruction stream single data stream that is simd if each processor has its own control unit each processor can execute different instruction on different data stream or data items this model is called as multiple instruction stream multiple data stream that is mimd now here this figure can clear you the idea what is simd and mimd architecture so the figure a shows the simd where you can see there is a different processing element pe stand for the processing element and there is a one control unit that is a global control unit which all these processing elements are connected to the global control unit with the help of interconnection network whereas figure b you can see the mimd architecture where uh, processing element along with the control unit is there so uh, opposite to the simd mimd each processing element along with control unit is connected to interconnection network so this is a uh, very famous architecture simd and mimd one question to all of you that uh, which model among these two model simd and mimd is suitable for parallelism what is your opinion which one is suitable for parallelism simd or mimd okay no doubt about that mimd is very suitable and preferred for parallelism because a uh, multiple instruction stream and multiple data stream is a very suitable architecture for performing the 
parallel computing or parallelisms. So SIMD processor, some of the earliest parallel computers such as ELAC 4, MPP, DAP, CM2, and MSPAR MP1 belong to this class of machines. Variant of this concept have found use in co-processing unit such as the MMX units in Intel processor and DSP cheap as a spark. SIMD relies on regular structure of computation such as the such as those in image processing. It is often necessary to selectively turn off operation on certain data atoms. For this reason, most SIMD programming paradigms allow for an activity mask, which determines if the processor should participate in computation or not. So these are the characteristics of SIMD processor where uh, activity mask is there, which determines, which determines the uh, which processor should take part in uh, competition or not. Now, uh, this is the conditional execution in SIMD processor where you can see, suppose there is a program like if B is equal to zero, then uh, C is equal to A, else C is equal to A by B. And suppose there are four processor, processor zero, processor one, processor two, and processor three. And each processor ABC data are 500 in first processor, 420 in second processor, uh, 110 in third processor, and 000 in third processor, in last processor, initial values. Now, according to uh, our uh, condition given, if B is equal to equal to zero, then C is equal to A, else C is equal to A by B. Now you can see here, in processor zero, the B is equal to zero. So if this, this, this condition match here, so now what will happen if b is equal to equal to zero that means whatever the value of c is uh, assigned to uh, a okay that is uh, a is equal to c for example so here you can see uh, in uh, figure number two the uh, processor zero c is uh, uh, then assigned with value five because a is equal to five so this is a uh, conditional execution in simd processor now execution a conditional statement on SIMD computer with four processor, the conditional statement and the execution of the statement in the flow. Why this figure is shown here and what is the relation of this figure to the SIMD processor? So conditional that means uh, SIMD, the control is associated with only one processor. Control unit is associated with only one processor as shown in here. Now if the condition is associated with this control unit and uh, suppose, unfortunately, are, there are some circumstances where the control unit or the main processor can damage or it is under a failure or under troubleshooting or under maintenance, then ultimately the remaining processors will not perform. That is a drawback of, or that is the limitation of SIMD processor. Opposite to that, what happened in MIMD processor? In contrast to SIMD processor, MIMD processor can execute different program on different processor. A variant of this called as single program multiple data stream, SPMD, single program multiple data stream. Execute the same program on different processor. It is easy to see that SPMD and MIMD are closely related in terms of programming flexibility and underlying architectural supports. Example of such program or platform include the concurrent generation of Sun Ultra Server, SGI Origin Server, multiprocessor PCs, workstation, cluster, and IBM PCs. Now, what is the comparison of SIMD and MIMD? SIMD computer requires less hardware than MIMD computer. Okay. Uh, however, since SIMD processors are specially designed, they tend to be expensive and have long design cycles. Not all applications are naturally suited to SIMD processor. In contrast, Platforms supporting the SPMD paradigms can be built from inexpensive off-the-shelf components with relatively little efforts in short amount of time. So that is a MIMD. MIMD, the another variant of MIMD is the SPMD, single program, multiple data stream. Now, communication model. Uh, first one is uh, whatever we have seen is the control mechanism. Now, how the program can be controlled in uh, uh, explicitly parallelism 
so that is with the help of spmd and mimd and uh, simd also yes uh, mimd is more powerful the another variant of mimd is the spmd so that all things are about the control mechanism of this uh, explicit parallelism now the another uh, explicit parallelism uh, important parameter is communication model of parallel platform so there are two primary forms of data exchange between parallel tasks accessing a shared data space and accessing the messages this is very important so how the parallel task can be uh, executed so there are two very important forms of data exchange that is first one is accessing a shared data space and second one is exchanging the messages platform that provides a shared data space are called shared address space machines or multi processor and platform that support the messages messaging are also called message passing platform or multi computer so they, these are multi processor and multi computers are the very two important platforms which are used for message exchange now part or all of the memory is accessible what is shared address space platform we are talking about shared address space platform so where the part or all of the memory is accessible to all processor processor interact by modifying the data objects stored in this shared address space if the time taken by the processor to access any memory word in the system global or local is identical the platform is classified as a uniform memory access uma else non uniform memory access that is numa n u m a machines a shared address space you keep in mind that shared address space basically divided into two types of uh, memory access that is uniform memory access and non uniform memory access and it it all depends upon the time taken by the processor to access any memory word in the system global or local now here you can see the numa and the uma shared address space platform the typical shared address space architecture shown in the figure a uniform memory access where you can see the p stand for processor m stand for memory and this processor are communicated with the memory with the help of interconnection network that is uniform memory access figure b shows uniform memory access address space with cache because we require cache without cache we cannot work directly processor cannot access the memory at a time so what the processor is associated with the cache memory as shown in the figure b and then with the help of interconnection network it is connected to the memory now figure c you can see the non uniform memory access shared address space computer with local memory only now this is a non uniform memory there the memory is local no any global memory as compared to the uniform memory access is available in numa so processor along with the cache and along with the local memory as shown here the p stand for processor c stand for cache m stand for memory this c and m are local to this processor so that's why it is called as non uniform memory access what do you mean by non uniform memory access the processor can cannot have a identical time for execution of the task that is nothing but the uh, non uniform memory access whereas the uniform memory access all the processors are having a identical time for execution of the task that is uniform memory access now the distinction between numa and uma platform is important from point of view of algorithm design numa machines requires locality from underlying algorithm for performance programming this platform is easier since reads and write are implicitly visible to other processor however read or write data to shared data must be coordinated this will be discussed in greater detail when we talk about thread programming cache in such machine requires coordinated access to multiple copies this leads to cache coherence problem very important and famous problem cache coherence problem the weaker model of this machine provides an address map but not coordinated access this model are called as non cache coherent shared address space machine now shared address space versus shared memory machines it is important to note the difference between the term shared address space and shared memory we refer to the former as a programming abstraction and to the latter as a physical machine attributes if it is possible to provide a shared address space using a physically distributed memory now this is this is what explicit parallelism now uh, you one thing you keep in mind that explicit parallelism is opposite to implicit parallelism 
where explicit means a distributed system comes in picture a control structure communication model control structure simd mimd spmd the communication model the uniform memory access non uniform memory access shared address space and the shared memory machines all these things are related to the explicit parallelisms now message passing platform so this is again a very important part of uh, explicit parallelism so when i am saying that the machines are distributed along with their uh, local cache and local memory and they are interconnected they can communicate with each other by sending the messages that's why the message passing platform this article is important this platform comprises of a set of processor and their own exclusive memory instances of such a view come naturally from clustered workstation and non shared address space multi computer these platforms are programmed using variant send and receive primitives libraries such as mpi message passing interface pbm parallel virtual machines provide such primitives now message passing versus shared address space platform message passing requires little hardware supports other than network shared address space platform can easily eliminate message passing the reverse is more difficult to do in an efficient manner now student this is the end of today's lecture where uh, i will I, i try to explain the explicit parallelism so explicit parallelism you keep in mind the very important part is uh, the control structure and the communication model okay as shown here the control structure and the communication model control structure is used to specify the concurrency and communication model is used to specify the interaction between this concurrent task control structure simd mimd and then uh, communication model is this uh, shared address space platform shared address space platform is again uh, non uniform memory access and the uniform memory access and then there is a message passing platform that can be easily available with a message passing interface and parallel virtual machines and then the difference between message passing versus shared address space so this is a explicit parallel platform okay in the next lecture we will see the next very important article of unit number 1 thank you so much